an ever-expanding space. Hi, uh, I just wanted to start off by saying that this video is going to be a little bit different. Um, I wrote originally this down on paper, and so I've transferred it onto a Word document in the hopes that uh, it'd be a little bit more accessible and a little bit more neat. And the reason why I'm doing this form a little differently, you notice most times I just I read it and I walk away and I don't really explain much. In this one, it's because of the amount of things that are going on. Um, and so using the mouse to be able to point to things and explain it at the same time uh, will work out great. Uh, most times what I'm actually doing, might as well tell you this right now, is recording the audio and then I go back and record the video. In this case, it's all done seamlessly and live. So uh, first off, we're just going to, to read my writing and that kind of inspired an evaluation of alternate dimensions or parallel universes as the uh, formality for what we actually live in today. And it's just my thinking. There's no science to it. Uh, there's not a lot of proof that goes into it, but it's, it's something I found very entertaining for consideration. Um, so let's start with the reading. <clears throat> An ever-expanding space, vast and inexplicably able to hold infinite potential for ever more complex and new things. A universe where its sole inhabitants live in shrouded knowing of their lives' meaning and inception creation point. I conjecture a few things to easy my good old-fashioned anxiety. One. I'm a proto-thinker. My energies, however distant and eventually weak, do not stop until they are received. It would be irresponsible of this universe to have sending but no receiving methods. So, my good vibes will find their mark. If blocked or cancelled, the receiver will eventually have an imbalance causing a consequence. If I am being redirected back at myself... And the other Urs are being given alternate signals. There will be an imbalance. Uh, and then I incite the law of equivalent exchange. Incite. Evoke. <laughs> um, so let's, let's go on right into this stuff. It, this t can take a little bit of time if I'm not quick and succinct. Um, and that's the purpose of this, to be succinct. So my first evaluation is a biconditional or if and only if uh, argument for universe or earth let's just do earth a and earth b and this is about parallel reality how does that work how would that work could it work um so there's one where we have parallel universe a and universe b uh only exist is if either of them exists and this is uh this is weighted as a fair argument and i i give it a, a check mark and say it's equal to an infinite reality now i say in a parallel universe if not a then not b so there's neither earth a or there's neither earth b it doesn't equivocate to any kind of infinite reality or what we're experiencing right now um then we've got what if there is only b what if there is no b there is no a if no a then b what happens well i'd say that there is no parallel universe or no infinite reality um and there's, there's an argument to lend to that. If one gets destroyed, then the other one is able to be so well uh, contained or preserved that A can be referenced into existence by B. So it creates a more powerful reality. But it's just a, a word argument. There's no math to go with that. Let's go with A and then not B, which again, uh, what if we, we only live uh, in Earth A and then there is no Earth B? Well, then there is no infinite reality. Okay. Uh, so then there's a couple of things here. So then we've got this, uh, the concept and introduction of C. Uh, and we'll call this, C is not an earth. Uh, so it should be like a lowercase C or something else, but I hope you'll forgive me. Uh, a, if and only if C, if and only if B. A is directly and irrevocably connected to C in the same way that it is C is connected to B. It's not that A is all the way connected to B. There is a reason why it's, it's in this order. Uh, and the, the question is, what happens when you've got A, universe A, you've got universe B, but you've also got this relay in between here. And again, it's just a way to, to organize my thoughts. It's not the best propositional logic you'll find ever. Um, so then there's the, the idea, because I go on to evaluate knots. So uh, if there is no universe A or, well, what happens, right? Like 
if there is no existence whatsoever, what follows from that, right? Um, and I, I kind of, I've explored that myself, and I, I hope you guys do too. Uh, then there's a great one where it's a contradiction. We have both not A and A at the same time. What happens? And the universe is a wonderful place, so you'd be surprised how this can can happen sometimes. You get a contradiction. Um, so to evaluate the pictorial demonstration here, we're going to keep going and say that we're going to skip this one. This one I save for the end. So we've got, this is uh, kind of the, um, what happens or the parameters for existence has to be like a full box. So for the sake of explaining that, uh, if A existed by itself, we wouldn't have this powerful equivalent, uh, reality or the, this connected reality. Um, and it's just for the sake of argument. This isn't necessarily true. Uh, we've got B here, and that's interesting because it's exactly like A in terms of the fact that it has no defining line. And then we have C, which becomes our, our relay. So I'll kind of do this backwards because that's the easiest way because this is kind of out to the side here. Sorry about that. So here we've got if A, then not B, which is this one right here. Um, so as you can see, uh, they're, they're not connected. And in fact, A doesn't actually have any kind of closed in, you know, space here. So there's no, there's no condition of existence. Um, then we've got an argument here, which is a continuation, uh, of the same thing. So not A, right. we just have B, the, uh, the segment here or the asset. Um, you'll see again, right. You're seeing the, the kind of the mirroring of these two things. And in a way, um, it kind of empowers the argument that, well, what if not both? <laughs> we go back to the, the third one and we see that there, there's nothing containing either of these existences. They, they might be things, but there is formally nothing of both of them. Then we've got the interesting kind of equivalency here, which is... Uh, a, if, and only if, B. And I like to say that this, this uh, satisfies uh, the necessity I've created for this type of uh, an argument. So there is a, a connection, but they're so equivalent that it's almost like there's just one big universe here. There is no A and B. Together they create just one big universe. There is nothing distinctly con disconnecting them, which is where I get into the argument where you have to introduce a third um, parameter here or the kind of the relay. So you'll see that the relay cuts B and A, but it also creates conditions where A is its own contained universe and B is its own contained universe. So C kind of acts as like both the way for them to be disconnected, but also the way for them to actually formally communicate in a manner that creates parallel universes. So this is where I got into the argument, you know, is this really where we need to be? You know, it's interesting to say uh, if there is parallel universes, you know, or in this parallel universe, okay, but what's communicating to those universes or how does it, what, in what way are you imagining that this actually functionally works? And in my mind, there has to be some form of communication. Um, so this is like a tap or like something running parallel to both of these things. Um, so we'll go on to, to evaluate a few things. Um, mouse is over here. I think, no, we're going to go to the, to the formal here. This is, uh, this is an example of uh, something I haven't written down in any kind of logical uh, exchange. I just sort of wrote it. Um, so, uh, B is its own universe now, and then A is its own universe and A lives inside of, or over top of B. So either there's empty space where a is its own sort of contained thing, and then we get to the idea of a delta, which is equivalent to omega. And uh, let's just say, more or less, this is like a smaller version, almost kind of closer to like a square, than the rectangular version of the greater reality B. Um, so if like, let's say we are, uh, a Christian argument is, or the image of God, uh, you might say that B is a universe where God uh, exists and is fully... Um, more realized or more tangible or, or does things that are beyond our, um, beyond, uh, a regular person's, uh, ability to comprehend or recreate, but we do live in a referential or a smaller version 
of his universe or her universe or their universe, however you'd like to identify a greater universe. Um, uh, then we'll go on to say uh, that I think that this doesn't really equivocate to infinite reality. Um, again, right? Like what if A disappears? How are B and, and A communicating? Um, and again, we get into like the idea about alpha and, uh, and beta. This is um, delta and omega. I don't know if I referenced that already. Um, so delta would be like a smaller version, uh, but more or less approximates equ equally or equiv equivalently um, to omega. Uh, and then this is kind of interesting where alpha and beta are so powerfully linked, right, that they become their own distinct thing and then you can't even r really tell the difference between each other. Um, and again, for safety's sake, I wonder about this. Um, so again, this is where we see how C becomes a, a powerful uh, tool for, for reference here or a powerful tool for explaining parallel dimensions or parallel uh, functionality. And again, we've got the small universe A, so we'll call it delta over with B, you know, again, uh, or beta. And C is just sort of this relay that makes it so that while this is running... It has a parallel connection to A to make sure A is always running with B. And as opposed to this, where we say that without C, um, there wouldn't be A or B. Of course there would be A and B, as we see over here without C, um, which is something I wanted to explain a little bit more in depth. But at the same time, without C, we wouldn't have this secure link between them two. And again, I liked a little bit of this sort of a fun little word argument where, um, or a propositional argument where if A gets destroyed, right, B is just, you know, able to use as a reference to recreate A, and A is never destroyed. And then if B is destroyed, then A is a, a good enough example, and then B is recreated. It kind of lends itself to some interesting propositions uh, or uh, consequences, right? Like, what if there isn't enough information in A? But that's the thing, right, is if we live in such a complex or... or um, uh, well set up universe. It really is kind of interesting when you get down to it um, how the information would be almost like a compressed version of B and you wouldn't have any loss um, when doing that transference. And so then again, uh, we're going to go to these two things here. Uh, we've got our solid little universe A is connected to C, which is connected to B. And, uh, and that's kind of interesting too um, because again, we have this idea that without C, right, this is probably the most powerful uh, expression of this, where you got A is self-contained, if and only if C, which is connected to B, and this creates a bond. Um, then we get on to the final thing, which I think is kind of interesting, uh, and it creates kind of like a circular argument. Before I do that, quickly to the title, An Ever-Expanding Space, you can imagine... A is just continuously reaching. That's what I mean. B is continuously reaching. They will never encounter any end. With A and B, there is sort of a finite to this, right? And with the con disconnect, or sorry, the the splitting and the reference uh, point for C, um, I I would think, as expressed in this argument or in this one, that what we're actually saying is that um, there is a finiteness to it. There is a finiteness to this, but with the tapping here, it reaches into something beyond. And in this case, there is nothing beyond. So let's take a look at my final expression here. Um, we've got infinite reality A, which is what, uh, if you don't believe in parallel universes or you don't have any kind of conversation towards them, then this is all there is. Well, then what if uh, another example? Now suddenly B becomes the relay and C becomes its own universe. I know this is why I say it for the end. It's unlike everything else where B takes sort of a, an index of all the information of A that's going on and relays that information to C. B can also be a parallel universe and the reason why B exists is to tap parallel. And then again, it goes to C, right? And C becomes its own self-contained identity, universe existence. And I also try to make sure that this was kind of free-floating um, beyond this point. 
beyond its only reference point, right? Um, it kind of becomes interesting if you take this, you know, if this is what you live in, that's great. But then there's, <laughs> there's also the consequence. And somebody could disprove this and do some really fun stuff with the kind of argument I'm doing. But I'll finish it up here. Uh, if C becomes the same uh, in another argument towards the splitting of reality or a relay of information, uh, it becomes interesting because you can use all this information from A that exists in the same way that you're able to create another parallel dimension. So um, it holds that if there is only one reality or there is no parallel dimension and there is only one Earth or one existence, there's still a very good chance with uh, historical referencing and indexing, uh, taking lots of information and data, that you take that and then you go somewhere else with it and then you come back into this situation where you, from the reference point or from all this information, which will uh, be the source, it goes into or it uh, splits off into two things or two runtime iterations or, or two different parallel universes of the same thing by which there was an alpha right there, alpha. And then, uh, and then we get into the idea of beta and beta of course being something like this where you have one example of a non-parallel or non-division universe and then you have an example of something that is linked to it by which it is a parallel universe and is there a type of relationship that still happens while this one's going on? And if this, let's say, is destroyed, then beta becomes the master universe, we'll put it. Um, anyways, lots of things for consideration. I hope this uh, didn't uh, do much more than uh, intrigue and interest you as it interested me when I was considering all these things. And again, these are only word uh, arguments, not documents. Haha. <laughs> um, there is no proof. There is no mathematical foundation for a lot of this stuff. And anyone who's better at logic or propositional logic uh, could, in essence, disarm this entire situation pretty easily. But this is where I'm at, and this is what I, I considered when it came to the idea of what this inspired me to think about. Um, well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, whenever it is. Um, and... Uh, yeah, share love today.